Come Japan. Hello again, and welcome to Why Come Japan, the show where I interview creatives here in Tokyo. Now, it's been a while since the last post. The last post was uh, featured Mr. Bob Worley and acting in Japan. Well, I guess real life got in the way, and also I was trying to pump out the Setsubun video, which is still not up on the channel, because I've been deciding what to do with it, because I might save it for next year, because I want to see if I can get the right amount of traffic for it. I don't know. Part of me says I should just up it because, you know, I'm, I'm new to this and doing this whole video essay thing and they take time to put up. Like, there's like little small edits you might see in the thing. So, basically, with that out of the way, um, yeah, so today's episode is with Mr. Ozzy Awesome. Ozzy Awesome is a another YouTuber in Japan. You notice I do a lot of YouTubers. Uh, I, I'd like to do more people who do something a little more creative than just YouTube. I have somebody came out, actually a guy on the internet who was a fan of this show, contacted me, uh, Mr. Jimmy, I don't know if I can say his last name here, I'm not sure if he wants to go under an alias, but he used to work in NHK, and he uh, he asked me if, if he could be on the show, and yeah, of course, I mean, if anybody who's listening in would like to talk about their experiences living in Japan, or working in Japan, or actually it doesn't even really have to be about Japan, somewhat of a Japanese, or some, some sort of Japan angle would be nice, I mean, considering that the podcast is obviously called Why Come Japan, so... This being said, uh, yeah, if anybody's interested, just shoot me a message for right now. I mean, and there's... I don't have, like, a huge number of requests, so... Until that, maybe that changes. Now, you notice on my Patreon page, I said that you could be on this show if you pledge a certain amount, but that doesn't really that matter. Patreon page is mostly just there for, you know, the sake of just having a Patreon. And funny thing is, this uh, thumbnail you'll see on YouTube, or on the website, or on any of my social media, you'll notice that the image is of a, a Patreon, me and Ozzy's face. And I was sharing this with uh, Mr. Tikio Sam, and he was not pleased, he was not obamused by the, uh, the imagery of Patreon that I used for, you know, the, the title card for this. He saw it more as an advertisement. This isn't intentionally supposed to be an advertisement. I was just thinking I love making the art for these po podcasts because um, I'm a big fan of like a bunch of other podcasts. And one podcast in particular is this one named Word Funk. I think I've mentioned it before where it's kind of a really impromptu sort of podcast where they just have these random chats and whatever, you know, is in the chat, like an idea or... Uh, a phrase or something that just sounds ridiculous or absurd they often use that for the title cards there's one it, there's one episode where they talk about a meat ocean they come up with the weirdest things on the show and so they they uh the guy who runs the page goes under the handle leon thomas he uploads a picture of uh, a meat ocean you know like the, the world just covered in meat and that sort of thing. I mean, that sort of drives me. I love the whole interaction. It seems very impromptu, very real. Another thing about this podcast I've noticed is that I often repeat things that were in other podcasts. I understand that, like, some but one person's podcast is someone else's first time listening to your podcast. For example, whenever you make a YouTube video or a vlog or anything, that's their first listen, you know, of you or of your content. Yeah, so this being said, what it is is uh, sometimes I have to repeat myself, but you know, what's really actually kind of weird is what kind of goes back into high school. I used to like talk to a lot of people and I tell them the same exact thing. I'd like to gauge the reaction, see how they would you know respond to the same story. And I'd always get something different from everyone. Now, I know I realize with like this podcast, I can only say it once. I can't say it two or three times. So you probably notice I'm with interviewees and they say, you know, the internet is really good for debunking shit right? And you, you notice you'll hear that in three or four other interviews, because I just that just became a habit of mine in high school. Not even high school, probably even middle school. Now, something to note about this interview, it was recorded in a karaoke booth. So, because, you know, karaoke, or karaoke, as they're called here, booths, they're usually pretty quiet. I mean, I've always heard about people recording albums, in karaoke booths in Japan, because, you know, there's no real quiet places in Japan. Like I said, Japan's a noisy-ass place. You know, uh, right now, I'm here in my apartment. It's really quiet here, luckily. Um, <laughs> let's hope that lasts until they build something really obnoxious nearby. Yeah, so luckily, Mr. Andy-san, my editor, did some real uh, great edits uh, <laughs> for this interview. I mean, it almost sounds seamless. I'm really surprised, because uh, <laughs> it was much noisier than I thought it would be. 
I've been kind of reluctant to up this uh, interview, you know, because mostly because, uh, I don't know, we don't really have a really deep conversation here. We mostly just talk about Patreon and Ozzy's channel. So I feel like I really need to do Ozzy some more justice by making another Why Come Japan title with him in it. Because mostly I was just concerned about one video that he made back in 2016. Yes, that's how old this uh, interview was when I recorded it. But, you know, I, the only reason why I, I'm kind of slow in these uploads is because I like to take my time and make sure the interviews are nice and easy to listen to and they flow well. Another problem I have with this interview is... After this interview was finished, me and Ozzy had a really great conversation just about, like, inside baseball with YouTube people. What's interesting about this interview is I was kind of at a stalemate with Ozzy because I didn't know really... Sometimes, like, when what happens when you take everybody's advice and you listen to what everybody tells you and you're still not making it big. Sometimes, like, there's sort of, like, what's that movie? Mulholland Drive where... It's a movie about an actress who doesn't really make it because a lot of people in Hollywood don't make it. Um, I guess that goes for YouTube as well as a lot of people don't make it because reasons. And uh, with, with this being said, I had a few ideas on what those reasons were. So I'll address those after the interview is finished. Now, it's a short interview. And as like I said, I want to have Ozzy again so I can have some more, a little more personal questions. But relatively, it's a decent interview. Without further ado, check it out. <laughs> Why? <gasps> Japan. So, you've been on YouTube for how long now? Uh, almost eight years. I've been like a viewer for like, since 2006, so 10 years. Oh, but I've time. been a creator since, yeah, 2008. About, oh, okay. So about eight years, yeah. So what got you started originally? Uh, actually, uh, I was in Japan from 2003 to 2006, mm -hmm. and I didn't know about the YouTube community here, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I left Japan, and I was missing Japan, and then I randomly, when I was in Toronto, my hometown, I randomly came across a video by Emily1988, Apple Milk, or Emily, oh, okay. Apple Milk 1988, right. and then through her I found Ken Tanaka, and give me a break, man, and Tikayo Sam, and you, and all these people. And I was like, what? How come I didn't know that there's actually people in Japan making videos on YouTube? Yeah, right. And I watched everyone, everything, their entire, like, library of videos they had created. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I was in Japan. And I, if I had known, I would have been doing this when I was in Japan. So I kind of, like, was so, like jealous of everyone who was in Japan doing what I could have been doing. Okay. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to start a channel and even though I'm in Toronto, I'm going to start by just talking about how life was like when I did live in Japan. And that's mm -hmm. how I started. So I guess that's how everybody finds everyone. It's always through random searches on YouTube. Yeah, I think, like, it's like, honestly, it is like the gateway drug, like M Apple Milk, 1988. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't really like her so much, but mm -hmm. just that she, the fact that she was showing her life in Japan. Yeah. And then through her, I, I like I said, I met uh, Victor and, and then through him, Ken Tanaka and through him. And then just everyone was connected. So, um, yeah, I just, I, I just uh, fell in love with the J vlogging community. Okay. Yeah. I mean, now I saw your recent video about Patreon and all that. I mean, okay, okay. You, you've been saying that you've been on YouTube for like seven years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You I'm have like saying. a large body of work, like a lot of stuff. I, I think I had, I had over 500 videos. Damn. But uh, I, I had to like, to that. yeah, I think I deleted or, or privatized about a hundred of them because um, when I became a partner, mm. um, finally after so many times of rejection, um, a lot of them got flagged for like copyright material stuff. Mm -hmm. Even though I, I try my hardest not to use like anyone's copyrighted music, but right, right, little right. things would always pop up. Like once I use an image from India that someone had made copyright free, but then they changed their mind and then I got dinged right. for that. And it was like a really good video I had done. It was just a background backdrop too. Mm -hmm. So it had nothing to do with my content. But because of that, I had to take down that video and stuff like that. So, but yeah, I have like over, now I have like, I think almost 500 videos on my channel. Okay, yeah, and you're pretty uh, prolific, I see. You like, make stuff every day. Yeah, yeah, in December, for yeah, for the last seven years, I've been making the Vlogmas 25 videos in 25 days every December for seven years. Right, right, and then right. on average, I make, I'd say, one or two videos a week mm -hmm. for the last eight years. 
because uh, I'm not sure if you follow what's his name on YouTube. He's kind of new to the game. I mean, he's popular, dude. Really abroad really. in Japan? Or? No, no, no. Um, outside, I mean, like in the, in the states. There's mm-hmm. a guy named Game Theory. Maybe you follow it. Ah, uh, I've heard of that channel. I yeah, I mean, he's just, yeah. he's really interesting because he like has nice animations. Mm. He uses math and actual math and actual right, science. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, I have. And that's probably why uh, a lot of people like his channel. I mean, I yeah, yeah, he's like that guy's my hero. Right. But. He made a video too about like. How YouTube is screwing people over and stuff. Yeah, okay, you heard about it. I've heard about it, I haven't seen it though. Yeah, it just came out. Okay, okay, okay. Days ago. Okay, yeah, yeah. Some people mentioned it. I think someone in my comment section mentioned it. Oh, really? So I should check that out. Yeah, no, he talks about how uh, basically, I guess you could say how YouTube is trying to kill the personality channel in a way. Uh, Like,. I guess, I don't know, maybe that's a little extreme for me to say. Actually, I think I get what you're saying. Do you know Caffeine Jedi? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah I'm just, friends with her. Okay, Stephanie, good. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's in England, right? She's yeah. In, she made a video yesterday or two days ago as well. Yeah, I'm so behind. She and, probably hates me for not following. Uh, but no, it was a really good video. It was basically saying the exact same thing, complaining about YouTube and complaining uh-huh. how, like, they don't like anyone who's too, like, who's kind of just in the middle uh-huh. and they don't like news or political stuff. They just want, like, the happy vlogs with like the hauls and the makeup hauls and the uh-huh. so she was kind of like it was funny the way she was ranting about it was really funny because she's like she's not like that kind of personality she's not a bubbly I love makeup and shopping oh, yeah, personality yeah, 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 yeah. so just the way she was talking about it was really funny oh she's so much a tomboy it's so yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> she, she reminds me of Michelle Rodriguez oh yeah right? kind of yeah, yeah, yeah I kind of that, that personality okay so now I saw in your recent video about Patreon and all that that <laughs> You know, you've set an example of how you've been on YouTube for like seven years, and uh-huh. you really haven't had that like much needed jump in subs or right. success. Like right. some, of your, some of our friends, like Mime or Duncan, Duncan, uh, or, guess, like all, all the all a lot of the girls, like Sharla. And, Sharla, yes, that's what I'm yeah, thinking about. Yeah, a lot of that, and even guys. That I, I think I think it's not that I have a problem with people getting successful. I'm mm-hmm. happy about that. I just was like, if I was a a lone YouTuber and I just went off on my own and I just didn't get any su- success I would understand mm-hmm. but I was like involved with everyone around me in that channel like I was on their video like you know we were always together so we kind of were like a community like the vlogging community mm-hmm. and everyone around me grew and then there's the half the people who just stopped were not really interested in YouTube or who just stopped YouTubing mm-hmm. so they kind of disappeared and then the other half blew up and then there was just me I was like that guy stuck in the middle I right. was still doing YouTube, I hadn't given up at all, but I had no success. Whereas like everyone else around me either gave up or blew up. Mm-hmm. Right, right. And that really frustrated me, I think. Okay, well, yeah. what, do you, what do you think is the key to, I'm using air quotes here, yeah, yeah, yeah. for respect okay. on YouTube? See, that's the thing. I, my, my opinion or my idea of what I think YouTube should be is apparently been wrong because I'm not going anywhere. Mm-hmm. I think now I'm slowly realizing that it is... Uh, of course, a lot of people said it's the girl thing. I get that aspect of it. Like, a lot of the girls automatically have a better chance because a lot of the viewers are younger guy viewers and they just want to see pretty girls. Mm. So I get that idea aspect of it. Or you have to be, like, really funny or really talented in something. So I get that I'm not, like, the, the skillful, amazing, talented guy. But I just assumed on YouTube that if you're consistent and you try hard to make good decent videos and your topics are interesting like I'm not just sitting like you know sitting in a core dark room and just like babbling for like 30 minutes right I'm actually like editing I'm adding music I'm adding in important like whether it be traveling or food or comedy or whatever it is I do do decent and I get a lot of good comments if everyone said you suck dude like this video sucks I'd have to rethink my career I guess as a YouTuber I'd have to Fat, right gay, like, yeah gay <laughs> go after yourself like die I'd get Fake. that right right <laughs> so that would be fine but um, unfortunately like the people who are reviewing my channel have all mostly like 90% are positive comments right and if they're not they're like critic like criticizing but in a positive way which helps my channel grow but my problem is the eyeballs are not coming to my channel and I think the reason is I don't know what the reason is and I thought it was just like the more you make videos and the more you better yourself as a YouTuber, mm-hmm. content and quality, mm-hmm. you'll get better. But unfortunately, that's not it. It's almost like high school. Right. And like the popular kids get the get like voted class president. And like the guy sitting in the back 
picking his nose uh-huh. is invisible. And I guess I'm that nose picking guy. You don't think it's like part of like that quote unquote trending thing? Uh, but I've done, I'm, I mean, like, yeah, that's part of it, I guess. But I've done, I follow the trend sometimes too. Like, sometimes if there's a news story or something that's really trending at the time, yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, make yeah. videos about it. And yeah. everyone else will make the exact same video topics. And mine's are probably even better edited and better quality, uh-huh. but they'll get like thirty thousand views for that video, where I'll get like a thousand views, even though it's the same topic. And a perfect example is uh, PPAP. Yeah, yeah, oh, that, I saw that video. Yeah, yeah, it's an an annoying guy, but he went viral, right? Uh-huh. And then like people in Japan is perfect because it's a Japanese person, so a lot of people went to the cafe, uh-huh. right? And I was the first person. I went on opening day, so you would think my video would be the first to get eyeballs on it and first to blow up, and. Right. I got like maybe I think 3,000 views now it's after like three weeks or something and then people went the next week like a couple of days or a week after mm-hmm. and their videos are like 20, 30, 40,000 already so I just don't understand what is different between my YouTubing and theirs and I haven't figured I thought there's a formula but apparently the formula is there's no formula well, yeah, I think that's the thing it's like a, a, you read like hundreds of books on like success and all that stuff. Mm. And basically, I go back to William Goldman's theory. Do you know who William Goldman is? He's a writer. He wrote uh, Princess Bride. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. Well, I like talking about him on this podcast okay, okay. for some reason. Okay. But basically, the best advice he ever gave me, I mean, this sounds really nihilistic, but right. it's, nobody knows anything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. lot of the reason why some people get popular is just because of happy accidents. Okay. I think a lot of the time. Right, right. But yeah. basically, for... I mean, for somebody like TQO Sam, who I interviewed in, like, a, a previous podcast... Yeah. This video, I think... I mean, the one you made about, like, yeah, like seven TV. subs and not making it anywhere and, yeah. like, trying everything. Yeah. I mean, I think this kind of video would depress him and make him angry. I mean, Why? Because, personally, I, mean, I, I find it a bit depressing. Uh, but I think getting angry at you for making me depressed only has, like, about a 50% chance of actually convincing you that maybe... Your thinking is a little off, you know? Mm, but, I mean, I, I didn't want to make that video, to tell you the truth. I had actually oh, okay. planned uh, seven years, yay! Mm-hmm. And then I started doing the thing that everyone does, comparing themselves to everyone else who's been around right. for seven years. Which is kind of a no-no. Yeah, so. yeah. So I think that really bummed me out. And, um, I don't know, I, I just... And then I, I had made a pay- Patreon account, like, almost two years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's sitting at zero for a year. Right. And then I went to, like popular YouTubers like Rachel and June and all those people and I know they're popular so of course they're going to get more people to support them but I was like how come the people who are already successful on YouTube are using Patreon to get more money whereas shouldn't it be for people who don't have that support and don't have that revenue stream from YouTube to help them balance out so they can actually because it's not like a, I mean it is a hobby but I am putting like 8 hour 8 to 10 hours oh, yeah, per no, video definitely you right? can tell so Considering that, if you consider how much I get paid per hour, I, I'm getting paid less than a Bangladeshi kid sewing shoes in a factory. Mm-hmm. If you average out like how much I get paid per hour per right. video, so for, I, our, for our listeners it, out there who don't know what Aussie looks like, <laughs> um, I look like uh, a Bangladeshi kid, I guess. I don't know. So. I, guess, I guess you could say oh, for our listeners out there, they see no color mm. like that one uh, person on Daily Show, right. <laughs> which is just ridiculous. <laughs> Keep out of politics. Right, right. I mean, I don't know, because I'm saying that, because, like, the other 50% of me yeah. says that I'm full of shit, and, like, my hubris becomes, like, my greatest weakness, mm-hmm. you know, if, like, if I attack your views, uh-huh. which in turn kind of devalues my argument, okay. you know, so to say. I mean, with this being said, I guess my question is here is, like, is what are you hoping to accomplish mm. uh, with, I mean, the video that you made, that video? Right. I think the biggest thing I was, uh, it was kind of a venting video. It wasn't a rant. Okay. It wasn't a, a, about a rant. It was more like a, a realization that mm-hmm. I kind of I'm on that middle fence area where I have to decide: should I keep devoting as much time as I do, mm-hmm. or should I refocus and maybe d- decide to go another route in terms of like a different? Because I mean, I'm not saying I want to be a full time YouTube career because mm-hmm. I know that's really hard to do. Even for like the big YouTubers, it's still not enough. So I know that money is not there, but I feel like I want to do something in my life, career-wise, that I enjoy doing. And the only thing that I've been consistent with has been YouTube. So it's kind of like the realization that if I want to continue to do the thing I like doing the most, 
I either have to grow more or I have to give up and find a new dream. And that kind of realization was kind of like messing with me because I was trying really hard, but half of me was going, what's the point of trying really hard no, when yeah. nothing's coming of it? Well, that's what they want you to do, right? That hypothetical they where they say, Don't, they want you to give up and all that stuff. But right. I guess if you listen to the advice online and all that stuff, they say, don't listen to that voice. Right. You just go to dark places. Right, maybe you're right. Um, I still want to definitely, I definitely want to stay creative. I'm tired of like, I don't want to be like a businessman. I don't want to do, I, honestly, I don't think I want to do English teaching much longer as well. So I do want to grow, like, I want a more of a challenge and mentally want to grow. Uh-huh. And I think I want to be more creative. So I thought YouTube would be one perfect place to start that. And I do like, uh, I know my skills are not, uh, that that high in terms of editing and video right. making and stuff so that would be something I'd be interested in getting to learn more about but like I said if I don't have the if I'm working a full time job doing other stuff it's very hard for me to focus on trying to improve my skills in any creative creative way right okay so so I mean like um Actually, one thing I did do is I went to like some YouTube workshops, the free workshops that they offer, and it was helpful. It was all in Japanese, so it was kind of hard to like understand 100% what's going on, but I kind of got the gist of it. And so little things like that, but like I said, those things require, because they're always held on days when I'm working. So it was only one time where I was free that day and I was able to go. So if anything, I want to have more free time to go after my passion, which is like more creative, maybe video or... I mean, like, you have, like, a set thing you want to do? Like, I want to do these kind of videos. Or, like, I want to do videos yeah. of science. Yeah, yeah that, that's the thing. Like, I, I, my channel has been so random up till now. Mm-hmm. It's been seven years of following trends or just doing what I feel like doing or starting new things but never like, seeing where it goes. Like, remember I did Jisho Roulette when I first started. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then that I was did, fun. Yeah, that was fun. And I did STDs, like, the snack test days. Mm-hmm. And then I did a little... I have all these, like, Gaijin Life and I have all these things. But I want to f- refocus my channel a bit to tell you the truth. I want to like have like two or three major categories because I feel like every channel that out there has their one thing. Yeah. Like they're either true. fashion or they're either food or they're either like shopping or they're like like tech or uh-huh. video game or right. reaction. So if I've done everything. I've done every little bit of all of those. And, and none of them have really taken off. Yeah, none of them have taken off. But I think the reason is because it's just like a one-off. So mm-hmm. once in a while people will come, but like the whole channel, like if someone sees my video on snacks, mm-hmm. they like that video, but then they look at my next video before and after that and has mm-hmm. nothing to do with snacks, kind of maybe turns them off. So yeah, I feel, yeah, it's hard. Feel, yeah it's really I think tough. I'm too random. So maybe I need to focus. I feel like I need to focus and try to make this more like a business because right now, until now, I'm doing it as a hobby thing, yeah. which is why... I have to start thinking of it more of as a business mm. and like marketing and promotion and that's why Patreon came into the aspect of it because up till then like I said I had zero patrons, patrons mm. and zero money from Patreon mm-hmm. so right well I mean like what's there was one guy I really watch on uh, YouTube his name is like uh, Leon Thomas from Renegade Cut and he does he does a Patreon I'm a patron of his okay okay and all he does basically is talk about philosophy and movies. Uh-huh. And I love his uh, opinions about what he has to say about a lot of these things. Right, right, right. And he's like, he lives off Patreon. Right, you know? right. See, I mean, that's, that's the dream. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I mean, I would love to love. I would love to continue with YouTube support and Patreon support and all this other side stuff I can get if possibly through you know through sponsors or whatever. But to get that, unfortunately, you have to somehow do it on your own and break out first. And then yeah. that comes after. So, That's but thank you by the way because you support me on Patreon. Too. Oh yeah, yeah, of so course. I was happy yeah. about that. I feel like I need to support more people. Mm-hmm. You know? That was awesome. I was really grateful. Well, it's always good to you know be altruistic on the internet. But right. do you have a favorite video of yours? What's one of your favorite my, videos? of my own? Yeah, of my own. Uh, I try to make every video as much as possible that I like and I laugh at it a lot. If I don't laugh at it a lot. I'll still probably upload it anyway, but because some people like that stuff, that's not that funny. But I would say one of my favorite videos is um, I made a parody of Terrace House, which is a uh, Japanese right, 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 TV right. show, and uh, I just like the way I filmed it and edited it, and even I, I use all my friends and that. yeah, my friends and family are in it. Um, I like the way not only the con- the quality, but I like the people that were in it were really funny, and we really actually made a a decent parody. 
on the terrace house yeah, opening. I don't know, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah, Maybe okay. it's the thumbnail or something. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite, I, I would say. Oh, really? Or or the Ike Meso. Do you know Ike Meso? No. That's the video. Uh, it's actually a real job in Japan. It's guys who are paid to cry. Really? And you basically... It's I for should, girls. Uh, I'll put this in the show notes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Th- there's at a... At the end of this. Most <laughs> of these videos. Right. There's a, there's a... So girls who are sad and don't have a boyfriend and are lonely and they want to, like, feel emotional, they call these guys. Uh-huh. And they're called Ike Meso because they Ike Men. And meso right. means to cry, so right, crying, right, right. crying, cool guys. And they they're like hosts yeah. kind of guy, host kind of guys. But they come to you to the girl, and they bring like a sad DVD, and then like tissues, and then they watch the oh, with so you, and they like kind of like cry yeah. with you and stuff like that. So I made a parody on that, uh-huh. uh, and it was it was a uh, it was pretty funny because I made it kind of like documentary style, and I pretended that my girlfriend mm-hmm. was the customer. And she's right, like interviewing right. her about her experience, and I dressed up as my Indian cousin character that I play called Munna. Okay. And so Munna was the Ike man who came to help Yoko, my girlfriend, cry. Okay. So it was really funny, and I really enjoyed making that video as well. So I really? think those two are probably my favorite videos I've made. Okay, because like my favorite, I mean, like the best video you've ever made that I've seen was, um, man, this is a long time ago. What? You made a video called I Like Stalking Girls. Ah! <laughs> is that with Nihon Jen? Yeah, yeah, back when she was around. Right, right, right. That I was so that. funny. Really? I can't yeah. remember. I mean, I remember making it, but I can't remember the actual content. I, I mean, like. That was like the wine cone. You know the wine cone? Yes, I that love like the wine cone. He's my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same. It was actually, it was actually um, inspired by wine cone. Yeah, that and, was great. And uh, yeah, she was eating snacks and stuff in her TV, like on her videos, so I kind of uh-huh. like. Like, yeah, I was creeping up on her and stuff like that, right? Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, you, you're, like, really on your game there. Okay, yeah. I, yeah, that's... I like also, like, the, what was the other one you made? Uh, the American Erection video. Ah, uh, the, the recently, one. what would what would uh, Oz do? The WWOD, which apparently doesn't seem... No one seems to like them. Because I made three episodes, and, like, all of them are the lowest viewed in my, like, last year of videos. Oh, really? So, but I'm just going to still do it because they're funny. Because it's, like, my own opinion about things. Like I'm, not, I'm sure you've seen the Casey Neistat video, where, like who I'm voting for. Oh, the Hillary Clinton one, Hillary yeah, Clinton yeah, yeah. One. yeah. Well, what's his name? Uh, did a parody of it. Uh, do you know KSI? I've heard he's, of him. He's the yeah, the, he's the, black, the black guy. guy yeah, from, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Okay, okay, I haven't yeah. seen his video. Well, it's really though. funny. He's like he puts a thumbnail uh-huh. in, like Donald Trump in, like the, a picture. Yeah, yeah. And he says, "Oh, I just put that in there for you to click the video." Ah, uh, right, right. Like, I'm from <laughs> the UK. Bait. I can't click even bait. vote. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right. And I, I said that That's too. Funny. I'm Canadian, so. Yeah. But yeah, I haven't seen that video. But okay. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's yeah. funny. I mean, you can do stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Is there anything you want to say before we go? Uh, not really. I just I I'm, I'm glad that you're back again because you were gone for a long time as well. Yeah, right. And uh, it's it's good to know that. And I like like you said, podcast sounds cool. It's something new and interesting. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully uh, you won't quit this one. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. no, I mean it's on like iTunes and I'm paying for it. Right. Up, so. Okay. 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 Cool. All right. Well, I guess I don't know. What do I say at the end? I guess I'll record it later. Okay. All right, but guys. Yeah, it, was, it was really cool. Thank you for having me on here. Yeah. No yeah, it was problem. Awesome. Oh, why don't you plug your stuff? Uh, yeah, I don't have much stuff to plug except... Um, YouTube channel. Yeah, my YouTube Twitter. channel is Aussie Awesome. Uh, and like this month especially, like uh, December, I'm making 25 days, 25 videos. And they're all memes and challenges and tags. So there's something fun for everyone. So I'm, prob- I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy it. And uh, yeah, I have my Twitter is the Aussie Awesome At the Aussie Awesome. And uh, I also have a Facebook page, or whatever. If you go to my YouTube channel, you can find all the links there, okay, Instagram so and everything. That, but your YouTube channel name is Ozzy78, correct? Ozzy78, but if you type in Ozzy Awesome, that either way, it'll come to okay. yeah, both. So either or. Yeah, because I was going, because I was using the handle Radbury for such a long time. Right, right. Oh, so now you see. I want to change yeah, it to yeah, Rad exactly. Culture, but right, I, right. I'm just going to keep the same one. Okay. But I like Rad just, Culture, though. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's a cool yeah. ring, too. Yeah, it does. I don't know. Okay. And I'm back. Hey, guys. So. I was thinking about the whole Aussie thing, you know, kind of a post-mortem here, you know, before I end the show. You know, there's not that very many popular Indian men out there. Can you think of any? I can't think of one. Maybe there's Cal Penn from, uh, what was the name of that movie? Van Hoosen? Van Hooten? Van Housing? Van Helsing? I can't remember. The one with, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's that guy's name? Um, Ryan Reynolds. Van Wilder, that was it, Van Wilder. Van Wilder, there's Cal Penn, there's a couple of other famous Indian men. Well, there's, there's another guy in Silicon Valley, but I think he's Pakistani. 
Yeah, um, not a really good demographic to push. I don't know. Usually if you're a white man, you get more success. I guess Markiplier is half Asian. PewDiePie is white. Jacksepticeye is white. A lot of people are white. It's too white. Why so white, YouTube? WTF. Uh, no. So yeah, I did sort of a post-mortem here. I was talking with uh, one of my friends about what is it that Ozzy could do to make his channel better? So let's focus on... Let me just focus on negatives first. So I can focus on the negatives and I leave the positives at the end. You know, leaving us with a more positive message. You know, because it's always bad to end on a downer. Um, one thing about Ozzy is... I, I don't know. I think like maybe his videos in general, he does a lot of these trendy things. But it's just kind of like at the tail end of the trend. You know, kind of like picking up the slack which what uh, with what other YouTubers already done and possibly have done better. That being said, I don't think that's a bad thing. Well, I'm going into the positive. Well, it's going it's to be impossible for me not to talk about the positive and the negative. Someone's going to mishmash it. Yeah, it's, it's kind of... it's uh, That's one of his problems is that sometimes he has... He makes too many, too many of these videos where they're they're trendy but they're not as good as they could be. I guess I guess maybe for an example, seeing something a little bit more polished, like a good J Japanese YouTuber out there is like you know, abroad in Japan. Uh, his videos are really high polished. But I'm just saying that there's sort of professionalism you could add to your videos to make them a little more accessible. Now, I know I probably shouldn't say this because my videos are amateur as hell, but I'm starting with a, you know, kind of an ambition. You know, I'm starting with my shoestring budget and kind of learning the ropes and seeing what I can afford and, you know, what it is I can put out there for the community and kind of be humble about it. <laughs> See where it takes me from there. I guess that's my biggest complaint about Ozzy's work is <laughs> if I had to, like, put this in terms of branding, you know, not like uh, SJW Snowflake kind of bullshit, but uh, branding, I... His videos are kind of like what my friend said. I'll, I'll just reveal his name here. It's Sam. Because Sam's really good. I'll let's point this out right now, right away. Tikio Sam is very good at giving advice. And I mean, a lot of the time, you think about it. People who've been struggling on YouTube or who've been trying well on YouTube or trying well at anything in life, really, they sometimes they need life coaches. And they people pay for this. And it's nice to have life coaches because sometimes people can point out to what it is you're doing um, some people don't like this because it feels like unsolicited advice, but at the same time, it's sort of good and kind of pushes you in the right direction, um, helps you focus on things, um, uh, and not everybody wants to, like, actually sit down and look at your shit, you know? They don't want to actually take the time to say, you're doing this right, you're doing that wrong, you're doing this right, because a lot of the time it's easy just to focus on the negative when you're making content in general, it, so don't get too carried away when you're making when when you're critiquing people. It's often good to point out sometimes what the good things they've did, they've did. Listen to me, they've done. Because often it's hard to find like the silver lining in all this. Because maybe you feel like I put my heart and soul into this, and I'm so embarrassed that it's such a piece of shit. You know. Uh, anyway, that being said, I think that's uh, Ozzy's biggest weak point. To use the branding term, it's kind of the weak sauce of uh <laughs> youtube if like maybe if you get up his game a little bit maybe work on the comedy a little bit more and i understand that maybe because you know youtube it's demanding it wants more and more and more and more videos from you and it's hard to like probably write good jokes that stick or uh have great camera work or any of that stuff i mean i hate to be at the stalemate again but i think he could improve in that term that regard as a person, I've always been conditioned to question authority. Maybe that's why it might seem annoying when someone approaches me with this condescending, unsolicited advice. I need to stress also that I like Ozzy a lot, but I'm only giving this advice as more of a reminder to myself rather than just spewing criticism with, you know, the intention of just being malicious to Ozzy. I mean, it's easy to be critical when you have nothing. I really do go through the same thing he's going through, though. And he's doing a damn good job at the moment. I mean, according to Social Blade, he averages out of like 40 subscriptions a month. And that's damn good. He's at like 17,000 subs right now. That's better than a lot of YouTube Japan people I know. Because like, I'm not even at that. Like, I'm lucky if like this video 
on YouTube gets 500 views. Oh, speaking of which, if you're listening to this, this is the only way I can tell if there's actually traffic on the iTunes account that I put up this on. Uh, if you could review this podcast, you know, give us a good review, please, uh, of this podcast. Negative ones are fine, too. Um, you know, just to give me an idea that somebody's actually listening to it through the iTunes account. Uh, yeah, so back to Ozzy. So I, th- I think he's doing that. He's Well, we think he's doing that right because he definitely has girls in his videos all the time. I mean, look at my Why Come Japan video, uh, excuse me, podcast with uh, Chris. I use the thumbnail. I use the picture of uh, Hitomi Tanaka. That's the most uh, viewed podcast or Why Come Japan podcast I have so far. So obviously having girls in your thumbnail is a plus. One thing that probably other people don't realize is the amount of networking that goes behind making a YouTube video, you know, because a lot of these people who push their videos, it's either A, a network, or B, they have like lots of reblogs or retweets or whatever through Twitter. And I imagine there's a lot of communication through some of these people who help push their stuff. And there's also like a lot of other bigger YouTubers who have like teams who make stuff with them. So that definitely helps a lot. Like, I know a few uh, Twitter people who are great at making internet content viral, but, you know, before I play that kind of card myself on, like, one of my videos, I'd like to have something that's a little bit more of merit, you know, for the internet. Because I imagine, like, the internet is, like, only for really a couple of things. Information, porn, and, I don't know, entertainment? I guess entertainment falls under porn, so I guess it's the same thing. Because, I mean, right now, Ozzy and my channel at the moment are really the amateur side of YouTube. And being an amateur channel has good perks, mind you. I mean, I say this because these kind of videos, you know, we feel a lot more intimate and realistic, you know, than some of the bigger name YouTubers, or or like the ones who are just trying to push a brand or a channel. I mean, is our content made for wide audience? No, absolutely not. I think this kind of ends on a good note. I, I don't know. I mean, I think Ozzy's doing okay. If you haven't heard of him, go check him out, and uh, hopefully next week, let's see here, I don't have another uh, YouTuber, thank God, but I do have some more YouTubers, because a lot of them are my friends, and I hope you don't mind the uh, sort of technical talk about YouTube here, and improving your channel. If you're not, if you're not a fan, just, just write something down in the comments, or shoot me a message saying, hey, no more YouTubers, man, YouTubers are dumb, or, <laughs> I don't know. All right, see you guys next time.